down south drip we got another down south legend in the building percy keith man i appreciate you for coming on to the show man my most definitely man i i do, do say legend bro like i don't feel no 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 type of uh, connotations of, of aging of, of me getting old and like that i, I am or uh, honored to, to take on the legendary status though i, I like that yeah like yeah that. Man, we, we we rocking with you. I mean, they rocking with you everywhere, but down in the South, man, like, a lot of people do look at you as a legend. Man, keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate you sitting down and having this conversation with me. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit back. I want to try to go over your story the best that I can. Uh, from growing up, clean on up to right now where you out here, you know, getting them old, getting, hitting that iron, bodybuilding, man. All right, so I see that you was born in the mid 80s or close to the mid 80s um can you explain um how Baton Rouge was in the early 80s was you when you was growing up man that's crazy because you had that's, I, I did a lot of interviews and that's the first time I've been asked that specific question like I'm not you make me like think of it to give you an answer growing up in the 80s I was born in 84 by the time I as far back as I can remember I don't remember the 80s style. I remember it, but I don't I don't associate it with an old memory. You know what I'm saying? Because it's my memory. I don't consider that that far back. You know, life go by so fast. But being a child and being born during the crack epidemic, I was growing up like observing everything and receiving it as, as the norm. So I was raised by a lot of crack things or illegal activities surrounded by me, violence, you know what I'm saying? But it was the norm, and it became the cool. It became the way of life. Like what we see now is, is is the descendants of that type of environment and lifestyle, and not just in Baton Rouge, but all over across the globe. For across real, for real. Globe. So um, early, we're gonna talk about the early. Eight. I know you was born in the '84. We're gonna talk about around eighty and. 889 era. I don't know exact. I know you was maybe four or five years old, five, maybe six at that time. But do you remember like being in the Baton Rouge? Because I heard you was bouncing between Baton Rouge and Baker. Do right. you remember like the scenery before the crack era started hitting real bad? Do Not was, really, man. Because by the time I like, I, I wasn't looking around trying to see like, man, the old wasn't like this at one time. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was like before this because I was born right in the midst of the shit. So yeah. everything that I seen, like in my mind, that's what it's always been. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's all I knew. It could have started the day before I was born, but it was there before me. So all I know, it been like that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 But I I do recall. Uh, what the city was looking like, or not as far as like from good to bad, but just, just different structures of buildings, different parts of the neighborhood that have been gentrified. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like it is a big difference from, from what it is now to what it was back then, for multiple reasons. Not just because of the crack epidemic, it was just yeah. due to people trying to get certain types of people out of a certain area because it's closer to a, a area or a piece of land or a school or something. and the niggas gotta go. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Real talk, real talk. So, um, when you was younger, I, I I actually watched in a previous uh interview that you done that at a real young age, you know, basically your mom's was like a kleptomaniac. You right. know, like to grab on the you know, you know, right. picking up packages or whatever. She was uh, a brother too. She was she was uh she was good at it. She, she was, was a beast, huh? <laughs> just with that, just with the way she managed it as far as like being a mother. Yeah. And she was she was good at it. I got you, you I got you. Being that and a mother. Okay, so when when you know, at that time, as far as what you can remember, um, was it just mainly for like clothes or what you know, what was she basically doing? Was it like grocery stores? It was really clothing well, stores. Yeah, she went, really, because it's it wasn't so much that she had a problem with stealing. She just, you know, it wasn't a problem. She just had that hustler's ambition. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. To where it never did stop. Like at any time you see a window of opportunity to open, just because it don't have a sidewalk leaning up to that window and it got bushes in front of the sill, that don't mean you can't crawl your ass up a window. Straight you up. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you walk past that opportunity and it's known that you left a lick on the table, then 
you got an answer for that. Like, why is yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, so whenever you was growing up, would you say that you spent the first half of your life more in Baton Rouge or would you say in Baker, Louisiana? Oh, uh, it's really kind of hard to, to really say because it was, it was both. You know, if I decided to happen to call my mama, it was either like I got to go with her to all these fucking stores. I can just go chill by my people shit, and that's really what I did. If I'm playing basketball or some old which I did in Baker, like outside, and shit, like I, 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 I'm good. I'm from this. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just really back and forth. So in Baker, what, what would you say is the biggest difference that you actually noticed between Baker and Baton Rouge? Whenever you went to Baker, do you feel like you went there and it was actually peaceful? You was able to lay your head down and relax? and not be on your guards as much in Baker than Baton Rouge. Can you explain the difference between being out in Baker and being in Baton Rouge? The people, there is the people. And I don't mean like types of people, I mean the amount of people. Yeah. Like it's not that many people in Baker that it is in, in Baton Rouge. It's a small, a small population, yeah. you see what I'm saying? But the same shit going on everywhere. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And by numbers, it, 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 the shit gonna increase. Like if you got a high crime rate over here, it's because you have a lot of criminals over here that you do somewhere else. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's all about words. Just everything just got in, increased in numbers. Crime activity, the the good shit. You see what I'm saying? The things that I associated with fun at the time was just more of it in a larger environment. I got you. I got you. So going to when you was in school. Like, what kind of activities was you into? I already heard you say basketball just now, but what type of activities was you into when you were growing up in school? I might have done all types of shit, man, dealing with school. I went to a private school from pre-K all the way up to like the ninth grade. And uh, I was an altar boy. I had to take religion as a uh, as a class. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I transferred from private school to, uh, well, from, a, from a Catholic private school to public school, my electives was kind of thrown out of whack due to the fact that I took religion as a as a as a class. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had to study it. So in, pr in public schools, they don't they they particular about religions. Like at the time, it was like you know praying before class and all this. It, it was like it was in the wind. Like the ch ch students pray, say the Our Father prayer, the Hail Mary prayer in, in public schools. So they used to do that before they did the, the pledge of allegiance. But, yeah. Like before class. Yeah. And shit. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They they put a stop to that. So that shit. I did the Boy Scouts for like a month. I, I, I put out the little, the club or whatever it is for fighting. <laughs> so in <laughs> school you was putting your hands on yeah, people so like that, huh, bro? No, it, it really wasn't it. It's just boys gonna be boys. Yeah, that's a fact too, saying? yeah. And that's, about, that's, that's all that shit was. Yeah. It's just by me being bigger than most of the, the, the other classmates and students, and I, I got the, the finger pointed at me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back out, man. So, um, so when you was, was the private school you was going to, was that actually in Baton Rouge or was that in Baton? That was Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. Okay. High school. Okay. So, so I put out that the mom of the five different high school. I put out every last one of them, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this, sir. Like, when did you start? really dibbling and dabbling in, you know, getting into certain kind of activities. I, I know you say young, about 13. Was, about 13. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, and what started that? Like, would you say you was out just outside and just getting into some stuff, just little knick-knack here and there, or was you really starting to dibble and dabble with it? I was already outside. Yeah. Like, I was already around, you know, where it was going on at. You see yeah. what I'm saying? And my dad, used to, he used to do some shit too. You see what I'm saying? So I was around, around the shit all the time. So when my, my mind matured to the point to where money was my motivation, not toy, basketball still, like of course basketball, oh, yeah. but I, it's a certain pair of shoes that I wanted. So at one point, Sakonis became a fad for like a summer. Yeah. And I had to get a pair. And I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? My mom was in jail doing time. My daddy, he wasn't in on, he ain't trying to end up on damn Sakonis. Yeah. And now that I thought I just got two new pairs of shoes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted more. Yeah. And I was around, I was like, shit, I can sell this. He <laughs> on it, he on it, he on it, and he'll sell it to me for the low low. So I seen that simple math now. I need to get it from him and sell it to them. Straight up. And that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My dad, I say, 
That ain't the same color shoes I got you. That ain't the shoe. <laughs> yeah, he, he, what the <laughs> hey, they got to realize back in them times, though, man, people actually paid, your parents actually paid attention to everything. And, man, you had to kind of sneak around and kind of do what you're supposed to, you know. Oh, my dad didn't know too many people, man. That shit ain't last a good week. I kept selling dope for shit. Yeah. It, it's, it took me a week, that's all, before he found out about the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the pops turned up on you when he found out, or it was that more like... A, that nigga made me write a sticky note. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and say, oh, I will not sell crack co cocaine and put it on my wall in my room. Yeah, and that just stayed on my wall for like years. And look, I never stopped. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> you gotta come on, watch that note, and you've been look, you've been doing your thing all day. It was funny. Look, my daddy can't read, mm -hmm. so I could have wrote anything. <laughs> oh, come on, you wouldn't know what. <laughs> he, he know he know that he know what that note's supposed to say. Yeah, I wrote this shit in cursive and backwards. He wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so um, at that time though, when you really start dibbling and dabbling with that though, like, who was your crew? Was you hanging with a certain little crew at that time? No, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't never had no crew. I had a cousin that I had uh, well, a few relatives, and they got in trouble for this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got in trouble for this shit. So a few times, they got in trouble for, for, for being the one that initiated this shit. You see what I'm saying? Cause yeah. a lot of people didn't believe that I was with that shit. But yeah. the whole time it was me with the stupid shit saying, man, look, this all we gotta do, man. Let me show you, look, this is how big this bitch gotta be for the $10. <laughs> this you know, anything big, this, yeah, this one right here, you can sell that bitch for the 15. Yeah. The right motherfucker come with 20, yeah, they can get the same one for the 15 for the 20. Yeah, straight you up. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Straight up. I should get there, hustling. Oh, uh, man, that was in my former life. Oh, oh, facts, yeah. That's for the people watching that song, you heard them? We talking about 30 years, we talking about 25 years ago, yeah, man. 25. <laughs> <laughs> so what Different age, hey, for real, for real, you see they, you see them sitting over there with them shoulder pads uh -huh. on, man. <laughs> but um, what age would you say you was whenever you started rapping? I started rapping around about I said about 11 or 12. It's kind of hard to say. Like right around my interest for like wanting to hustle. All that shit came together at one time. But the first music that really made me say, hold up, what is, what is this shit? Yeah, was 8 Ball and MJG coming out hard. Mr. Big, that song that, that did it. And like I went to listening and listening to while I wore the tape. I must have bought this down cassette tape, cassette tape about five times. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how much I love song so I had to backtrack to their music that they dropped before that was on that shit and they dropped it that phased in the Master P and TRU and this just exploded from there UGK you see what I'm yeah, saying yeah. so it just went the so, just went music overload so at that time I don't know if people still do it but you but freestyling and shit, we didn't even know that there was freestyling at the time like the call it did but we'll just be rapping while we getting loaded on that weed and just be rapping and shit. so that's how that shit developed. <clears throat> Technology wasn't what it is now. So getting to a studio or being able to record shit from your phone was non-existent. Studios was not never heard of. How much it costs? Who the f*** knows? Where are they? You got to look in the yellow pages. The fan, it ain't no Google. You see what I'm saying? So the opportunities for to be successful in the rap was at a zero. So what was the point? They even trying. But it was fun just to be rapping while the music was playing and shit like that. Okay, so whenever you got to high school, whenever you start doing public school, uh, what type of activities, school related, that you was actually getting into in high school? Did you graduate? And uh, you know, what kind of activities was you into? I was only in the, uh, in the basketball. I, I ran track one year. And I don't even recall participating. I can't even much recall not one track meet or track fucking practice or anything. Even much I might not even much fucking practice. It probably was just basketball. But I did graduate. I never failed. I had to go to summer school one year. But it wasn't because I was it was just caring for me missing too many days at school. Okay. Some kind of way, man, I just I, I, I made it through school. Not I, I never was one to be Man, I'm studying, I gotta go home and study. It wasn't it. It's just paying attention to class, half ass paying attention. 
This shit just sunk in. That's a hey, they got some people out here like I wish I had that's a gift right there. I wish I had that gift. So um after you graduated from high school, what kind of events was taking place in your life after you graduated from high school? So when I graduated from high school, uh, the woman I was with at the time was pregnant with my first son. And I said, shit, what else was going on? Next pills had been hit the city. Ooh, whoa, I remember them days. Goddamn earthquake. <laughs> I remember them days. <laughs> I was so poked. <laughs> Fumes of the dust from the bag come out to hit you. This is just your, your ass locked up. Straight up. <laughs> Sniff of a Vicks inhaler. Hey, a Vicks in Hey, you ain't playing with that. A for real for real. Light hits your ass. You just go to dancing for no fucking no reason. reason. Scroll yeah, lights. Yeah. <laughs> you take half of one of them motherfuckers that make you do this to here. I'm telling you. You take the whole thing that make you do this to here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and jiggles. And that bitch will have you jigger lady. For real, for real. For real. That's when I did develop the city, man. Jigga city. Yeah. So, <laughs> so at that time, would you say, okay, you you say y'all, oh, your girlfriend at that time had just got pregnant. Did you say that you was gonna go out and start doing some working, or at that time did you wasn't on no work type stuff? You was out there doing what you supposed to be doing to take care of your seed. Man, I had caught a. I was lost in the south, dog. Man, I had caught a possession intended to distribute charge on. Uh, and during the Christmas holidays on my senior year, so by the time graduation came, I was fighting a, a federal drug charge. So all of my chances of going to uh, high school, I mean going to college to play ball, that shit that I was at a zero. My record was already tore up for being expelled from so many different high schools to where it was just like, so I was chasing the pipe dream about playing basketball and getting hit with the, the fact, the reality that that shit ain't, ain't finna happen. I just sat on my ass for like about eight months. I sat on my ass about eight months before I went to prison. I went to jail. And that's when shit just went downhill for like two years. I ended up going to Elaine Hunt's boot camp uh, program. It took me 11 months for the, for the, to come home from there. Do a sitting in jail, going back and forth to court to even to, to the point where I played guilty. To get to a satellite camp that shit me way to North Baton Rouge. For a week later, for them to send me back to San Gabriel. And then I had to sit on um, HRDC block or in the Beavers or whatever <clears throat> until I got into the program. I came home, and that's when I really decided that that type of lifestyle, sitting on my ass, was getting high, that didn't like me. It might not be basketball that gives me straight in life, but it's something that's going to get me straight in life. And that's what gave me that, that 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 ambition that like I got to hustle, I got to grind, I got a job, I got to get a hustle, I got to sleep just the proper amount of where I can function for another twenty hours and get right back in it. Having that mentality, man, hit the ground running. I was home for five months and went right back to jail, and I stayed in that bitch yeah. for five years. You see what I'm saying? And it's like every time I came home, I had that drive for the really turn up. Sometimes I had slips. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I always came back better than the last time. So okay, so you say the first, the, you, so you got uh, boot camp for your first jokes. You, you jokes for a little while, you came out and you was actually into, you, you actually got in the boot camp program? Yeah, going back and forth to court, bro. During them eight months, though yeah. I was from high school to, I went and I had to go to jail like three times on remains for, for feeling dirty on um, piss tests. Yeah. yeah. And the last two piss tests I took, I was testing dirty for cocaine because I had started snorting. <clears throat> and I was sitting in a, in, in a parish with a guy named Too Tall, God, and um, the rest of the dead and shit, man. But Too Tall looked at me one day and was like, man, what you in here for, though? I was like, man, I fucking piss dirty, man. And then he looked at me and said, you, you in here because you, you piss dirty? Like, you on your own accord piss dirty. You and this bitch with niggas that's in here for murder, finna be getting life and this nigga over here praying to God he don't get the death penalty. Ain't gonna never go home. And you and this bitch cause you, you won't get high. And that shit had fucked me up, man. That shit made me feel like so stupid. Yeah, yeah. But that's what happened with that as far as like going in and out of jail and shit. So when I, I did them 11 months, it wasn't the same as the fucking 30 days re, 30 day remand. Yeah. When I ended up doing them five years, it wasn't like nothing before. 
it was something totally different. It made my mind click to somewhere else. I had to really like spend a lot of time with myself and work on myself. I had to see how my mind worked. I had to be around other people yeah. who had minds like mine or did that I do. And I just analyzed ways of thinking. I started asking myself, like, am I like these people? Like, I'm seeing these people have perspectives on Do I do that? You know what I'm saying? And if I do, and I noticed that I did, I asked myself, can I, can I change that? You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, can I actually, like, rewire in my head to make me behave different and view the world differently? And I did. But it wasn't good enough because I kept going back to jail. And every time I went back, it was for more critical. You know what I'm saying? More high profile sh You see what I'm saying? I'm facing more time. You see what I'm saying? The lawyers, they got more expensive. You see what I mean? To what now it's like, that shit ain't gonna get it. That shit not designed for a nigga to win. You see what I'm saying? That yeah. shit not designed for no nigga to win, man. Okay. Not like that, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, um, whenever you came home the first time after you know after you got caught with the possession with the intent to disturb it like you say um the second charge what led up to those five years was it on the same type of time or Shit, was no. it some man i went to jail on a funny burner stop i was laying in the bed dog police waking me up and put your hands behind your back i got a son two of them really that's hemophiliacs they free bleeders so if they get any type of bleeding internal or external, they don't have the factor nine gene in them to make their blood clap. So <clears throat> we didn't know this at the time. My lady took my son to the hospital. I don't know what made her say what she said, but they made them people come get me. You see what I'm saying? She told them the baby fell out of the bed while me and her was arguing. They came and locked me up for domestic, a domestic dispute. I was on parole, so I couldn't bond out. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Then they came back and rebooked me like five days later for, for child abuse or, or cruelty to a juvenile or some old shit, saying that it's a possibility that I could have struck the child while me and my girlfriend was arguing. So at that time, I'm like, listen to what you're saying, man. Like, how can I strike someone if I'm not striking anyone? If how can I accidentally strike a child when I'm not striking anyone? Like, we was arguing. So she's safe. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we wasn't I got off from work, came home. My mom asked me if I seen the baby head. I went seen my baby head. I was like, what? Why my baby head like that? You need to take him to the hospital. She took him to the hospital. I, police, get put your ass up. She ain't behind your back. Yeah. <clears throat> and then while I was, look, that was in between. That happened like after I had came home. I was home for five months. I came home from boot camp, kind of like, you know, Swole up. And shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, was popping, 19 years old, yeah. fresh, feeling, feeling, feeling damn good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Bitches on a nigga dick. Bad as a bitch. And I was the wrong one. Nine months, 10 months after me being incarcerated for the stupid shit, I get rebooked, damn, for calling out as a juvenile. I didn't a 15 year old girl, and she pregnant. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the yeah. fuck I did? What? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what I did? Straight <laughs> Are you up. serious? I said, you know I've been in this bitch for 15 months, huh? Are you sure you got the right nigga? Straight <laughs> you know, up. I said, look, I ain't I promise you, Mr. Officer, I haven't had a piece of pussy. <laughs> I don't even know you know I, You sure it's me? <laughs> they went, oh no, this happened in such and such. I said, I said what? <laughs> no, I didn't. Straight <laughs> no, up. No, I didn't. My girl had the little boy, man. I said, got the picture. I looked. I said, oh, shit, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I look like me. <laughs> yeah, man. So I said, parents for three years fighting me. Because I didn't know how old the girl was. You see what I'm saying? She told me something differently. But that shit can't be used as a defense to this charge. Like, yeah. She actually been telling the people that in the police report. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the officer telling me on my way to get rebooked, like, person or oh, the girl told us that she lied to you about her age. Like, it's f like he telling me, like, that's up what's going on, you know what I'm saying, she, she telling us, yeah. you see what I'm saying, so it ain't like she maliciously did shit, you see what I'm saying, as yeah. far as like lied about her age, but yeah. being at that age, what did you expect, yeah. you see what I'm saying, like that shit go on, man, that's, right that, now. Hey, that goes right on got a lie, it and it's passing for it, and it's, it's some stupid shit that's bound to happen, yeah. you see what I'm saying, it mm -hmm. happens all the time, but uh, and that, when I said, and that bitch, but, 
she actually, I want to state that because a lot of people might, you know, once they find out really what the deal was with that, they like to send blame toward just saying that it wasn't like that. Like it was her father, they had gotten to some type of dispute about some shit. He did that shit to punish her. Like, yeah, one of them type situations. But people do shit like that. Yeah, yeah. People do shit like that. People say the worst shit ever to the people that they love the most. Out of, out of anger and out of frustration and the heat of the moment. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. people act out of this shit to people that they love, and it's, it's what people do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what age would you say you was when uh when when with, with, with the stuff with the with that happened with the child? Was that uh was you still you was you say you was like around nineteen around that time? Yeah. Like with uh, well, uh with with your baby that that fell out the bed and all the all this yeah. bull that was at the age of about nineteen. So was you like going to the studio at that time, or you was just still? Out just hanging you know, with the fellas, just free, back, free. I you was just okay. Shit, no, I had just done the eleven months and came home with a new demeanor. Was doing what I was supposed to do. I was on very strict parole. They called it intense parole. Once you got out of boot camp program, we had to go through six months of that shit. That we had a six o'clock curfew. If you do straight on the first three months, you get your curfew changes to eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. But my, because you had a certain amount of time that you could be outside of your home. Yeah. <clears throat> By me having a job that required me to leave the house early as the fuck, I had to be in the house early as the fuck. Yeah. So all I did was work, go catch a few little plays, and go home. You see what I'm saying? That's yeah. it. I, I wasn't fucking with nobody. I wasn't, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that funny burning shit happened, man. But <clears throat> looking back in life, with all the shit that I done did and got away with, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? All this shit that took place in circles and, and places that I would have been in, if I wasn't incarcerated, yeah, I don't think I would have. I don't think I'd be where I'm at right. I don't think I'd be right here right now. I think I'd be somewhat worse than than where I'm at. And where I'm at right now is it's good. Yeah, like it's good. Like it's a lot of people that I I knew that's not here no more. You see what I'm saying? A lot. Yeah. There's a lot of people that ain't gonna be free that I know ever again. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So the fact that I'm here and breathing is is one thing. The fact that I'm Free is something totally different. You see what I'm saying? Like this is really some amazing shit. So everything that they happened to me in life, man, it's a sad story. But I'm grateful for my life experiences. It made me who I am. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It gave me the perspective on life that I have. You feel me? Because I have daughters. You see what I mean? So yeah. I see how other people probably wouldn't see it on first glance. You feel me? I don't have to think down steps to see what all the possibilities of some stupid taking place because I've been down that road before. I have some good ass experience on how far left can turn. Yeah. You see what I mean? Okay, okay. So we uh the next charge, well um uh I I, I don't even want to call it like you what you say uh juvenile with all knowledge on juvenile. Yeah, like like how, when did that happen and like what age you was at that time? And was you I was, in I was nineteen. I had to be nineteen. I probably was eighteen. I matter of fact I was eighteen. Oh, okay, so all this was just hitting like boom, yeah, boom, I, I turned, boom, I turned boom. 19 in August, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And from my recollection, I don't even think it was, I don't, I don't think that I even much had to met that late off after I had and came home, because it was some just some spontaneous shit, yeah, you know how that yeah. shit be when yeah, you're oh, young, yeah, man, yeah, you can meet yeah. somebody, and then and the next day you, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, like, that's, that's the way it is, yeah. You yeah. never see this again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got adults that do this shit down there every Friday and Saturday night, sometimes on Wednesdays and Thursdays. You see what I mean? They call it casual sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? So yeah, shit, yeah. That had me on the game at a young age, but I got arrested for that stupid fool my old lady. Yeah. And I was in the parish. I had a birthday and was in that bitch. And I got sat in that bitch for five years. So when I came home, I was 24. Yeah. Just hitting 25 that August. You see what I mean? Mm hmm So that shit was... <clears throat> So whenever you came home after that five year jokes, um, where was you at with the rapping? Like, you know, was you doing your thing? Like whenever you came home, did you just jump out there and you know, was you rapping in it with like people that you know or was you just, you know, catch, trying to catch I up on some shit? I wasn't like that. I wasn't trying to be a rapper. I never, I never set out to be a rapper until after I accidentally ended up on a song with, with Kevin Gates. And after people went to respond to the song, I was like, oh, 
They go, I wonder how I've been it, I've been crawled in, so I guess I'm rapping, not told. And that's how that shit took place. Like, during the five years, I don't know where Kevin was when I, I got arrested, but within them five years, a lot happened. You know what I'm saying? The whole world changed in, in my general area due to Katrina, all type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? That was five years. Now, it, it's not no long ass time. No, that's but eight, a man. lot of shit happened yep. within a, in a day. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. So, when I came, when, during that, during that, that uh, five years, Kevin started rapping and made a name for himself. But when I got released, he had to make a name for himself and ended up getting locked up himself. So, I said about a year and a half went by, he was still locked up. Mm -hmm. He ended up coming home. Be on a song. One night being looking like riding around and he called him a summer with <laughs> Nick told that boy where we were going. That nigga said, uh-uh, they all come over here. <laughs> we were really in that bitch Joseph. He in that bitch recording and shit, we Joseph. I just say, man, you, 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 you fuck with that rap shit too, huh? Perfect rap, huh? I'm like, shit, that bitch looks like going ahead in that bitch and then, and yeah. So I went in that bitch and, and did my little dagger. Yeah. And they was in that bitch like, man, that bitch. I'm like, man, you see that bitch like that? They like, yeah, that bitch like that, man. <laughs> For real, that bitch was like that. They went to bounce that bitch down. And they said, what you want to call it? That bitch looks like, man, I just call that bitch talking stupid. Like, y'all and that bitch talking stupid on that bitch. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how that, that shit that took place. And that's how my rap career started. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I heard you bring up Hurricane Katrina. Where was you at? Did you just come home when Katrina hit or you was? Shit, no, when Hurricane Katrina hit, I was on lockdown on K2. The whole dorm was on lockdown for about 20 days. We had went on lockdown the day before Hurricane Katrina hit for, for red calling back up. Uh, we was back there having random big ass for the whole door just randomly fighting like two, three times a day. Like, this is red call. Like, I plug the TV, man, everybody strap up. They room action. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> 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 put a red on lockdown. <laughs> okay, so you come home in 2009, you say. All right. 2010, uh, BWA was started. Uh, you was one of the original members with BWA. Can you talk about how you felt whenever you first got signed to BWA? Going back, thinking about this shit, it was it was it was what it was what it sound like it was. But I never get caught up in what's going on around me. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm somewhere else as far as like what my mind is, is focused on. Like I'm not gonna focus on right here and now. Cause life has taught me that right now is it's going to change. Like this is not set. Like these moments is only moments. Like at any given second, some shit can happen, good or bad. So I always was focused on the future, on like, okay, where am I going with this now? And saying, saying, now what? I need to do this and I need to do that. I didn't stop working. I tried to go full fledged, but at the same time, I wasn't tripping on <clears throat> what was going on as far as like with the music. I was just there. You see what I'm saying? Like, I really wanted Kevin to be successful more than I did myself because I understand the way this shit worked. Like, I'm saying to him, like, all my fans is coming from his fan base. So the more he succeeds, the better my chances of success. You see what I'm saying? I never was on shit like that. It's just personality clashes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just it. And by me not being no freak for fame, and, and money don't move me. You know what I'm saying? What money can do for my life moves me. And I know there's so many ways to get money. And I done went without before. So I'd rather, you know, put my, my morals first, myself first, and not greed or ambition or thirst for fame. So I stepped back, you see what I'm saying? For years, like it was years like that I wasn't a part of BWA. It wasn't set in stone, you see what I'm saying? Like all the merchandise, the BWA sweaters and shirts and shit, the ones I had, I printed them business myself. You see what I mean? It ain't yeah. come from the merchandise box because I wasn't around the entourage. I was in Baton Rouge while everybody was on the road, but ain't nobody say nothing that person wasn't a part of BWA. I didn't say nothing about this. Like, I didn't give a f I ain't the type to just be on some this that ain't me. Yeah. Unless somebody do say some shit about me. If I hear my name on a song, then I'm going to react. You feel what I'm saying? But other than that, like, I ain't finna f about it. Especially on a song music. Like, I'm too good at that. 
Oh, you a dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Leg wise, yeah, I'll put your ass on the table. Oh, you ain't lying. You and I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute about yeah. you putting some people up on the table, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so I was gonna ask you about that. I was gonna ask you like with the BWA movement. You said that you wasn't going on like shows, like like tours with them and stuff. Now, did you do that any? Cause that's what I was gonna ask you. How was it being on the road? You know what y'all doing, y'all thing. Right, like, <laughs> you ain't like it, bro. It, it sucks, bro. <laughs> Damn, okay, that's man, news to me. Man, I hate that road life. Man, I hate it, dog. Like, so can you give us tour, like a being a band for hours, then going into a hotel in a city that you ain't from for about two hours. Put your shit down, got to go to a nightclub, to stand on stage and shit. then go right back to the hotel room, be up two, three hours and most of you sleep about two hours, then you're back in the truck or doing repeating. Like, I ain't really with it. <laughs> Fuck Ooh, that I, I got you. Well, not that you say it like that. that. That's, the, that's the grind, though. Yeah. You know I'm saying, but that's just not my type of grind. That's like truck driving, that's like working offshore. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I ain't with that. That's not enough freedom for me. That's that's too much. Like I, I just can't see it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So if you was to come out with something positive, because I it sound like overall it's a no go for you. Can, can you give us some positive feedback that you actually had going on tour? Yeah, like it was an experience. Like I was. That's some shit that a lot of people don't get the experience. You see what I'm saying? As far as like being on stage, hearing people recite my verses back to me. That's raw. Like, that shit that up. Raw as They got that bourbon festival going on now. Yeah, they, oh, they turning yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They pulling up sideways. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That shit, it was raw, dog. Yeah. Having people, like, just react to a nigga, man. Like, that shit was raw. But I, I still didn't, didn't, didn't cut all this. It wasn't that raw to where I was like, man, I need to do this, I need to, I need to, I need to have more of that. Like, I, I'm just tolerate what all the fuck going on. It was, I didn't give not one fuck about this shit. There's a lot of nice to where I didn't even much perform my verses. Like, and that shit kind of like was like, what the fuck even here for? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, shit, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to do that stupid ass. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they just didn't, they don't do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? I know that. Because they got so many people, bro, that's dreaming of that opportunity. You see what I'm saying? That will kill for that shit. That actually do some shit to get in a better position. Like, people do that for that shit. And here it is, this shit is at my feet. And I, I could care less. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I had to live with this shit for, for throughout my whole career. And, like, my discography of speak of that. Like, I'm very inactive when it comes down to putting out content. Like, I have moments to where I disappear. You see what I'm saying? Just due to lack of interest of the shit. You see what I mean? Like, crazy, dog. Okay, so December 29th, 2012, you, Mr. Kane, Lil Snoop, had a cipher that y'all was doing, man. Can you explain the energy that was up in there that day, man? Can you give us a brief description of what was going on in your mind and, you know, what y'all did, you know, during the event and I'm after the event? I'm telling you what led up to that. DJ, your boy, Earl, chicken and watermelon. He's a <laughs> character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a character. He'll put some shit together. When it comes down to business, he's going to work. You see what I'm saying? At the time, him and the Snoop had to click up. Snoop had just had a cypher in T.I.'s basement. He had to just got a check from, from Meek Mill. All this shit had happened within days leading up to the cypher. But two days before the cypher, Kevin was shooting this video for, uh, I think, Satellites. He was recording the, the, the video for Satellites. And I was on set, me, Earl, DJ Fat Man, Cool It, Bread Wanna Cool It. <clears throat> we was all outside on the balcony while they was inside filming. We was just out there. Cool they had this camera with them, we was out there freestyling. And I, they like person run some shit. And at the time no one had to hear me rap. So I ran some shit. Earl looked at me, he said, man, he said, when I call you man, answer the phone, man, please. And he dipped. <laughs> and he dipped. <laughs> and at the time, me and Kevin was like just sitting here, like that nigga ain't go nowhere without me. And I'm like, you know what well, shit, that's what it is, nigga. I ain't going nowhere without you, that's where you at. 
You know what I'm saying? It got to the point to where people had to call me for see what the f nigga was. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about like everybody, like talking about his manager or um, label A and R. They're like, man, where where where's Kevin? <laughs> like, yeah. My man told me he fucking sleep, man. He told me to tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> until after 12 o'clock. <laughs> so with this kid, don't me about him until after 12, 12 o'clock. o'clock yeah. yeah, now after this shit, then I, I, you know, I do the run around for you. I know where he is. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Fuck, I'm in this car. <laughs> <laughs> so, two days later, passed by. Me and Kevin chilling this shit. That be early in the year. Like, man, come to the studio, man. We had a dead game studio, bro. Like, I got Snoop over here. We just on freestyling this shit, man. Just pull up. I'm like that. So I to, man, Kevin, like Kevin was standing right next to me when that phone call came. So I'm like, man, I'm about to dip, man. He's like, where you going? I'm like, my finna go for Earl um, by the studio. I ain't wanna say dead gang studio because I'm knowing he ain't really f with them people. So I ain't wanna be like, man, I'm finna go over about a nigga shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go in that Earl. Like, I'm, I'm coming, I'm going. What else? That's just what it is. And I ain't wanna put him in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I go, but I ain't just finna just tell you, man, come somewhere. Well, you know there's some, some tension there or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's, you see what I'm saying? Like, fuck, I'm right around the corner from where these people are from. Like, it ain't, I don't see the issue. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> shit, Kevin ain't see the f issue either. He said, shit, I'm coming with you. Straight <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> shit, and he told me. That nigga told me, man. That nigga say, oh, that's my mama come with you, man. Because you, you just going this shit. You got to know your value. If you gonna pull up, they gonna have cameras and shit, man. I'm telling you, I do. Earl called you, man. I'm coming with you. Just show the f up. I pull up first thing I see is a f camera. And I think shot by David G recorded this shit. Matter of fact, he did. Yeah, he did. So you didn't even know what you was going into. Should know. We pulled up at that bitch, man. Right before we get to walk in that bitch, I remember. I can't remember the producer. But me and Kevin had recorded a song, and a producer had gave Kevin like a, um, a email or some old shit with Boku Beats on that bitch. And the nigga was calling me and calling me and calling me, asking me what song was Beats Kevin wanted. But I'm telling you, at the time, people had to call me for to get in touch with this nigga. So I'm trying to deal with the phone call while we're in the parking out of this shit, you know what I'm saying? Trying to tell Kevin, like, man, this nigga keep fucking on me behind these beats, man. What's going on? How this shit work? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I killed that shit, we went in that bitch and bam, there it was. Shit, Earl just been sitting out, y'all wanna get a cypher going? Earl really initiated that shit. Mm -hmm. And shit, that shit out, man. Niggas went to rap and shit. They did they shit. I'm like, shit. I get a turn? You know what I'm saying? Like, this this, this what's going on? I'm like, shit, and that shit happened. So, on that cypher, it was you, Mr. Kane, Lil Snoop. Honest opinion. And I'm gonna give mine af afterwards. Who do you think went the hardest for that cycle? Little Snoop. That's that's my opinion. That's 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 your opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion. You think you so you think you you think Little Snoop actually actually did a little bit better than you? I don't like, know. Not, I, not, I ain't gonna say better. better. I ain't gonna say better. That, yeah. That's the wrong word. That's the, the wrong all, word. The, all the freestyler. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. Being able for the for the freestyle. Yeah. Being able to deliver. Where it's pre-written or not, like that should take a talent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you don't know that this situation is about to occur. Yeah. You don't know you about to start rapping right now. You don't know what beat about to be played. You don't know the tone of this shit. If this nigga rapping about something and that nigga rapping about something, you start rapping about some other shit, that shit ain't gonna blend in. You see what I'm saying? Snoop was was deaf. He was he was guy. like non-stop, like Nigga had to stop him. Nigga had to come in on top of him. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually say, listen, because I, you know, I remember watching this and like it amazed me when I seen this going on. Because like you say, the I didn't know. I didn't thinking about it right now. I didn't know that that freestyle battle that um, you know, that he had just did and won a ten thousand with Meek Mill and I think Deshaun Jackson had just yeah. set up. Yeah. Uh, where he had won that money, I didn't know that had just took place that close. But you, so Lil Snoop was winning with it, is what you're saying. Man, Snoop really had that joke. Must have had that joke too. Oh yeah, for sure, Mr. for sure. Sit on this thing. Yeah, yeah, but get up though. Listening to that freestyle and watching it, we all played equal parts enough for it to come out as it did. 
no one did better than no one. No one did lesser than no one. Like it's all a collective work. When people watch that, they're experiencing the whole thing, not just in parts by person to person. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like we created a moment in time. Like this video gets referenced every time I go live. With people, people mention this. Man, that's hard. People bring up their, their freestyle more than they bring up any songs I done did with whoever. The yeah, I done done songs with with Shaq Glizzy or YMCMB. You see what I'm saying? Like I done been on the album of the Hit Factory with Barry Man, watching Slim down there in some form, Cole while Lil Wayne doing skate production. I done been at, at uh, the Ace of Spade, King of Diamonds, some old club in Miami at the time that was popping, man, Lil yeah. or some old shit. I don't know for New Year's. Watching Barry Man smoke a joint this goddamn big. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn. When they come around to me, I can't hit that bitch because I got quit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was some dog. Okay, so, okay. So we're, go, we're going to snoop. I, well, my honest opinion, I got to say because I'm going to tell you something. When you came in, it went, it went, if I'm not mistaken, it went Kane, then it went Snoop, then it come to you. When you did your thing, you came back with another one. When you came back with another one, like, it seemed like after you stopped rapping, ain't nobody want to spit. Like, it was almost a 10 to 15 second pause because they didn't know who was going to come in and rap. I don't know if you ever checked that out, but man, go back and take a look at that. The second time that you rap, when you started the next one off. Man, ain't nobody want to come in behind you and I say, oh, he he done murdered it. He murdered it. And I looked at the way Lil Snoop dapped you off after you finished rapping the first time. When he dapped you off, I say, boy, Lil Snoop know he put that work in, bro. So, uh, man, I, I got to tilt my head off to you on that one now, bro. I feel like you murdered. And Lil Snoop was like a little freestyle king. Yeah. But to me, honestly, bro, you murdered that. You murdered it. You killed it. So, man, I tilt my head off to you for that. Appreciate that, man. I worked, man. What happened with Snoop, man? He was a cool ass nigga, man. And I ended up running into this dude in the most randomest places, bro. Like Juvenile and Currency did a song, and then the video was shot like with a strip club theme in it. And the video was out. If you Google um, Currency and Juvenile, the song should pop up the video. But me and Snoop sitting on the couch while they doing their performance scene in, in, in the club scene, and that wasn't planned. Like I just ended up in fucking in, in New Orleans. He was down there, we ended up on this set and we just fell off in that bitch. We yeah. ended up performing together in Monroe. We ended up doing a radio run in Monroe. Like, dude was really cool as the f Yeah. But his his recording process, being that he was a freestyler, he didn't write nothing. Damn. Nothing. At, at any time. Never. His recording process, it was what people record like now, like it's standard, that punch in shit. Yeah, punch in, yeah. And, and just murder the engineer, just whoever the engineer is now. These niggas need to be getting paid more. Yeah. They need to be paid more for, for what they gotta do. They have to chop and edit bars, bar for bar, which is good because I like the recording process, shit, I use it now. Okay. But if Snoop was alive, man, <laughs> wouldn't nobody be able to outwork him. You see what I'm saying? All you gotta do is press record button, just let this nigga know. Yeah, he gonna go through about about sixteen balls before he be like, hold up, stop that bitch. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like for what, nigga? You got a verse and a hook. Mm. <laughs> Let me get on this bitch. <laughs> 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 Rest in peace, Snoop, man. Real nigga. Shout out to his dog C4. Ended up doing time with C4 after this shit. Damn. Yeah, man. So, um, after that, after the cipher, man, did y'all line up and do anything after that to, you know, to kind of get to know each other better, or did y'all break Mr. ways after that? Man, missed a couple. Man, missed a couple strong relationship. You yeah. know what I'm saying, man, I've stayed in contact ever since then. Man, Snoop was like we kept crossing paths with each other. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all that shit stayed intact, man. All this shit really kind of like, kind of like diverted and kind of went apart was the BWA. And that was really like in fans' perspective because they didn't catch my absence for the longest. You see what I'm saying? Like, the shit just not coming up. Like, the more questions about it, like, it's so fucking recent to where it's like people are assuming like this shit just recently happened. Like, I don't know what the increase is in the interest of me all of a sudden, but it, it's starting to take place. You see what I'm saying? I've done more interviews, paid interviews, the past two months than I ever did. Yeah. Ever did. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't gonna put out a video on months about music. I've been flooding 
in the world. We were helping fitness. It don't mess a fan. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> now, I don't even much think it's a push up or a bench press or a pull up that got people interested in, in, in what I'm doing. I think they seeing the ambition. I think they seeing the uh, the courage to show that I can do multiple things. Like I'm not afraid to show who I am. You see what I'm saying? I'll show you I'm working out. I'll show you that I have a sense of humor. You see what I'm saying? I speak on life and show you that I have depth. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's just I'm just being more open with who I am and I think people kinda like they like to see that. Like not me in general, they just see what I'm it, doing. I, I think it's you yeah. in general. I think it's you. I read really, me personally, I can't speak on that, but I think it's you. Your personality, you solid, you know what I'm saying? I really think it's you at the end of the day. Oh man, you you you're you're a street figure. I can't. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna take that word "street" out because I know you've been through a lot in life. But man, you like a public figure that everybody got their eyes on and everybody want to know what you doing. And man, like I say, cut that camera on and start recording yourself, man. Your fans gonna come behind you and they gonna make it do what it do. That's that's the best way I can put it. So bad, man. I think it's you though. Me so personally, bad. that caught my eye. Ben caught it. I've been talking about doing this, the interview that we're doing right now for a while. And man, look, we here. So I think I think it's really you at the end of the day. Um so now that you say that, December 29th, 2012. I'm I'm never there. Hold on. Edit that out. Edit that out. <laughs> Alright. So June 20th, 2013. On a Thursday morning, early that Thursday morning, social media went crazy. Uh, Dream Chaser artist Lil Snoop was shot and killed. What was on your mind when you actually got that news? At that time, at that time in life, I had not already experienced and it's like how life worked. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It was just tragic to hear that it happened. You know what I'm saying? Like how all rules is like that. You feel me? It was, it was just a, a, a time. Like it was one of those moments to where it hit you, that you reminded that that we all gotta die. I and mean, then like you don't get no no heads up, you don't get no uh, no warning texts, you don't get no preparation for the tragedy that you about to endure. You see what I mean? It was just man. Okay, so like. Was that like the one of the first artists that you had did a little work with and had some kind of you know communication with? Was that like the first artist around you that actually had, that you lost, or you had lost previous artists that you worked with before him? No, like that was the first time shit like that happened in, in, in my rap career through that experience. Like somebody that I done worked with, somebody that I associate with that I actually like enjoy their presence. Yeah, ended up dying due to some some due to violence. You see what I mean? Yeah. So would you think that it, that it, did you think, like what went on in your head? Like what I'm trying to see is like, did you think that could, I ain't gonna say possibly happen to you, but did you think, what's the words I can use? I'm gonna bag away from that. I'm gonna bag away from Cause I don't wanna say nothing, you know, I, I believe in right. the universe, I believe in, right. you know, I don't wanna put no certain energy out, out there in the house. But oh, uh, I get where you was going with it, and I did look at that. Uh, like I look at all situations. You see what I'm saying? I asked myself, like, could that happen? Not just to me, but to anybody. You see what I mean? Because mm -hmm. that's not no common case. When you talk about a celebrity, that's not common. You have more people that are not celebrities than you do that are celebrities. Yeah. So that means these people' lives are unique. Certain situations are unique. You know what I'm saying? The only yeah. way that you can actually fathom or, or try to get a sense of what they like might be like is if you share some type of celebrity status yourself. Yeah. You see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a lot of people like to speak on celebrities' lives and their decisions. Yeah. But they don't know. You see what I'm saying? They don't know. It's like they trying to tell somebody that shit stink, but that person work at a sewage plant. You don't know what shit smell like like this person. You probably know what a, a fart smell like. Yeah. You know what your shit smell like. The people in your household shit smell like when you go in the bathroom behind them. But you don't know how all the cities smell like. And that's the case with celebrities and their lifestyle. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. For example, you have average people work nine to fives, go to church on Sundays, don't curse around their kids. 
go to a concert, see the, see their idols, happen to, to meet this person as they get into their band to leave, mm -hmm. and become a groupie. Yeah. Well, the whole entourage, just to be on the same floor as they idol, the next morning go back to their life like it never happened. That's fan behavior. That's the type of fan personality trait that this person have that never reared his head because they never was around their idol. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? A person have a chance of being around a person they idolize the same chance they have of winning the lottery. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So no one knows how they're going to react and probably I'll never know because a lot of people go throughout their whole lives without being no one remotely fans. You see what I mean? Straight so up. A lot of people don't even must know themselves because they haven't even must been in any type of situations to see how they'll react. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So looking at, 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 at shit as, as, as celebrities and trying to all uh, put two and two together, do some type of all uh, figurations and assume like what shit could be like, you need more data to be able to, to get close to what the situation may be like if you never experienced anything like that. Straight up, straight up. Okay, so after we gonna talk about you and your, what year did you, do you feel like it was that you left BWA? About 2012. It was 2000? Yeah. Okay, like I so. Say, I didn't, nothing was said about the separation or anything like that ever. You see what I'm saying? To like after 2018. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Kevin made a song or some old shit said, look, and me can't sit at this table like, I was in jail doing a 10 year sentence. You see what I'm saying? Like I got sentenced to 10 years for possession of intent to distribute cat, crack cocaine, convict the thumb of a firearm. Yeah. Or the CEOs in jail, I was it. The, the tape came out and they like, person, you heard that? And I'm like, fuck no, I ain't here. I'm, I'm in jail. Please let me hear it. Play it on your phone. And they played it. I think it was like 2016. I had like two more years to do. So I heard that shit. I'm like, okay, this nigga won't say my name in a song when I told this nigga, man, like, don't, don't, don't play with me like that. Cause I'm gonna play back. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I had to wait two years. <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> so just imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. what feel like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I had to sit in jail and then, like, night after night, like, like thinking, like, what the man said about me amongst these, like, in, in, in the rap world. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm saying, okay. Okay. Just give me a minute. You feel me? Yeah. And then that's how that shit took place. I, I, I did what I had to do and I bagged back. You see what I'm saying? I ain't f with that. I ain't f with that. You feel what I'm saying? The way yeah. I feel about it now is I can care less. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can care less. I see them across my, my timeline every now and then on my explore page. Exercise is a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people they expect me to have ill will or a negative perspective about him, and I don't. And the fact that people always assume an X, I toy with that. You see what I mean? Like yeah. I easily just crack a joke about this nigga and the feather in his head, and people are like, oh, you heard me say it? When the whole time I'm just really jousting. Like, you just, I don't yeah, deal yeah. With this nigga, like, I'm bound to what's some shit. Yeah. Just for the yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just simple as that. So, when, when, whenever that, so, okay, let's take it to here. Like, whenever you did, you say you love BWA in 2012, you say you got a 10 year jost. What year did you get that 10 year jokes? 2015. 2015. Okay, can you explain what was going on at that time? I, 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 you did time for those charges, so I feel like we can at least maybe discuss it a little bit. We ain't got to go too far in depth with it, but you say, uh, you say, attempt to distribute, and what else was going on with you? Uh, possessed, um, uh, convicted felon with a firearm. Okay, okay, so. When you caught those charges, you got 10 years. Um, what state of mind was you in when they gave you that 10 year sentence? I, I felt relief. I felt relief that it was just 10 years. I was happy. I felt like a bag of bricks got taken off of my back. I was eager to go do that time and come home. I had paid my lawyer a lot of money and I had charges for four years. You see what I'm saying? But I caught the charges in 2012. When I was on that site and shit, like yeah. I had I had open charges at the time. The whole time of my music career, like the first five years of it, I was fighting open charges knowing I was gonna have to go do time. Yeah. Everyone in my circle knew that I was gonna have to go lay it down. Yeah. You see what I mean? So 
it was a whole bunch of like a psych psychological exercises that I had to go through. You see what I'm saying? To stay mentally strong, being around people, planning for a future that I know I'm not gonna be around. And no one is like actually like taking into consideration that the, the conversation that went somewhere that I really can't even partake in. They're not even much picking up on my demeanor, that I'm not even interested in what's gonna take place two years from now. So I don't even much count me in into those conversations. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. it was a bunch of shit, dog. The ride just seeing what life was really hitting on. Like it don't matter how much loyalty you give a person, how silent you stay with a person, that's not gonna make a person be that way with you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was one of my faults. You feel me? Being too loyal to other people instead of having my own. You see what I mean? And the that I want is it's not much. I like time. That's what I like. I like moments. I like life experiences. Shit that I can remember. Shit that I can actually remember and use. You feel what I mean? Like I can't remember money. I done had money. I done had it several times. I done been without money several times. I can't go back and get it. Like when I'm dead, like I'm not gonna be thinking, oh shit, I'm about to die in about five minutes, man. All the money I had. No. I'm gonna be thinking about life. Shit that I'm gonna leave. It's gonna be over with. Yeah. You see what I'm that's the shit that I hold value for. So anything that consists of, of pulling me away, like consists of my physical presence, like I'm gonna value the time of it. Like I could be doing something else with it. I could be spending time with my family. You see what I mean? I can have deep discussions with a child and have their mind to think on a deeper level. You feel what I mean? Like I could be spending time with my, my girl, my sisters, my father, instead of f***ing off with somebody who really mean me no f***ing well. Probably got some shit going on because they just f***ing stupid and I might get caught up in some shit that ain't much funny just by association. So many, so much shit can go wrong when you're around other people. Like you can hear it there as well. You know how about that? So, um, the ten year sentence that you got, and you say you start, you start twenty twelve. You started all. Uh, that's when the that's when it took place. Uh, what year did you come home from that? In two thousand eighteen. Two thousand eighteen, and that's when you dropped the song that you dropped when you ever came home. All right, I did a song called "Listen Close." Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't like it was just me just running. Really, like it was just me, just rapping. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. what I was saying, it was it was intent. You feel me? It wasn't like I was just randomly saying some, but it really wasn't for the stars. It was really like to tell my side, like you know, let me tell, you, let me let me speak on what went on at this table that you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't gonna act like you the only one with a voice. You know what I'm saying? Like I could be heard too. You talk, you know what I'm saying? Like you talk about a lot of people who don't have a voice. At least like not like how you though. You know what I'm saying three minutes on, on a beat and the whole world gonna hear it. You know what I'm saying? Other people like they can only go on Instagram and, and rant. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go for your queen with no pawn. You see what I'm saying? Straight I'm not up. gonna do that. Straight up. Chess moves, damn. Okay, so whenever you drop the song, do do you feel you got your 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 statement, your point, everything. You 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 was actually able to make the song and just get everything off your chest and not just really, leave everything. I, not really, cause I didn't I didn't say nothing about how I felt. Like it wasn't no emo. I didn't express any emotion. I expressed like events, like things that yeah. actually happened, things that can't be debated or, or, or be looked at differently because it's an opinion or emotion or just my perspective. I spoke on some shit that actually happened. Like it don't matter who feel what by what these things take took place. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't give no f about it really because I decided not to be around that shit. It wasn't like no man won't you run with shit like that. Is I I spoke on everything that I had dislikes about. Like through the whole town. Like man I ain't with you. this right. It was a lot of time to work. We was in situations out of man, you know what? I'm, I'm about to dip, man. I ain't with this. What's going on? Like, yeah. I ain't with that. Y'all niggas tripping. And I, you know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah. shit kept t taking place the way it became. Like, I'm the nigga that's always tripping when it's not. Like, it's y'all entourages and followers, most of them. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people that was a part of that shit that, that knew <laughs> yeah. what was going yeah. on. Yeah. And they just wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? They only came around when need be. And I respected yeah. that. You feel what I'm saying? Like, everybody who was involved with that. I 
respected what was going on, man. It's a, it's a, it's a job. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah. It's a job. Who go to work and just, just like they boss? You see what I mean? This nigga wasn't my boss. You yeah. feel what I mean? Yeah. This wasn't yeah. no job for me. Like, yeah. I wasn't there for it. You see what I'm saying? Like, I want some shit to go have some post to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to be around some shit going some away that it don't have to go. You feel what I mean? Like, the shit should have went how, how it really should have went. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there were so many ways to get paid from that, man. Like, like the, the possibilities for a nigga to be endlessly rich was just like a no brainer. <laughs> and I'm like, like who's the, where's the think tank at? Real like, who's the one making the, 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 the game plays? Like, <laughs> who's the strategist? They slipping on, they pimping. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Straight <laughs> up. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after you made the song, um, you know, do you think uh, we're not gonna take it down? Um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about what's going on right now. All right. Whenever you left jail the last time, um. Do they, did that bring a big influence to what you got going on right now as far as with working out and, you know, doing what you're doing in life right now? Uh, what happened? Some more crazy shit happened. I was all uh, doing shit I ain't had no business doing at a high caliber. And George Floyd died. How he died. And by me being the recluse on social media that I was at this time in my life when this shit took place, I was very inactive on social media because of what I was actually doing. You see what I mean? Like, yeah. and I, I just didn't post on, on social media. Like, I go literally months without posting a picture. Live, no stories. I ain't out of work that shit. Mm. You see what I mean? I never had, like, a... a, 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 a I urge to use Facebook, so I never was on it. Somebody created a Facebook account, a campus account, asked me, and was on this bitch for years. I had to build up a following to where every time I post a picture on Instagram, they'll screenshot it and, and repost it with a caption and shit. They did this, they did some shit. For, and I posted some shit related to that George Floyd shit, and the authorities, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't take lightly, lightly to it. That's, that's what that, that shit was about. I didn't get a I didn't get arrested because of uh, uh, illegal activities. I got arrested because someone catfished me and, and, and made a statement that could have been a threat to society or some old shit that's what was told to me. And I thought it was some bullshit. I was going off on the investigators like taking the on my face with that stupid ass shit. Like ask me about some shit that you know what the you want to know. You know what I'm saying? So I could tell you then on my face. But as of right now, you talking Chinese to me, Facebook. I said, what about who George Floyd? You know I'm dating a white girl, right? How can I even much have a a discussion about a racist situation when I'm in this bitch with a white girl? You see what I mean? Like this, that's what my way of thinking was. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it ain't for me to speak on black and white issues when I'm in this bitch with a white girl. Clearly my perspective on racial issues is more broader than other people. You see what I'm saying? Damn. But that's what that shit took place as. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's how that shit happened. Yeah. If I wouldn't have been doing no illegal activities, I'd have still got arrested behind that stupid shit. I wouldn't have got charged for nothing because it would have been easy to show like this. This not me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Damn. And you know what's crazy? I seen the signs of that shit causing trouble over the course of like four or five years. I had like seven random females DM me on Instagram with screenshots asking me, "Hey, is this really you?" And I'm like, what? And I'm like, no, this ain't me. And like, oh, I've been talking to this person thinking it was you for the past three months. This shit happened, dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's probably some shit you can search on on Facebook. I don't know how it works. and probably find this account and see they 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 activity on that bitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I don't know because I don't use the app, but it should be out there. You see what I'm saying? People do some weird ass. That's why that fame shit, I ain't really too much for that shit. I ain't really too much for that shit. But by that shit happening like that, dog, <clears throat> Fizz ended up picking the charge up. That shit was crazy. <clears throat> and some kind of, and I was looking at a lot of time. It was more drugs, more guns and shit. 
Yeah. Or whatever was so major or what the, the, the feds picked the charge up. Like they I didn't get arrested by the feds, I got arrested by my city cops, yeah. the cops division. And I ended up all having my charges picked up by so, by, 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 by So by. the last charge that you caught, all that pretty much stemmed up from somebody posting some fake that's stuff. That's shit. That's where that shit came from, dog. What? Cuz I remember, I ain't going to lie. You know, I'm I I, I stay, I, you know, I stay out there in the Hammond area and when when I seen I that did pop up yeah. that you know with with your charges and stuff, but that's crazy. Exactly. Now imagine being told that shit while you in Central Booking about to be charged with all this shit. You being told that's the reason for the investigation. Somebody tell the person we we all we ain't worried about about about, about no, the shit you was doing. We ain't worried about this shit. If we we this you look at what you're saying on this on this Facebook thing. And I'm looking like it's you for real. The investigators went to Central Booking two days in a row asking my girl about this shit. They ain't gonna talk to me. I cut and the whole tank. I was that bitch going off. <laughs> I already yeah, know. I was that bitch going off. No. Hey, my girl was pregnant at the time and they had her in a separate room. I, I'm hearing them asking them, asking her questions and I'm just overly loud talking and then I haven't gotten to it with one of the, um, the um, officers. You see what I'm saying? But it turned out these motherfuckers was crooked as they still in evidence out there. <laughs> that sound and about right around here. I was fighting my choices. And that shit had to like, they had to throw all my choices out. Me and like 1,600 more drug cases. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. So I'm sitting in federal custody playing cards with some other people that's waiting for the, to get shipped. Yeah. And I'm busy. I seen that shit on the news. I didn't react to it. I seen the officers. And I was like, damn, that shit crazy. Two days passed. The shit started being aired on the news because one of the officers like exposed all they heads. Like they had did some cut to him, and he was like, "You know what? Y'all won't play that game. I'm gonna tell everything." Oh. Yeah, told everything, and on like on the news, sitting up a shit like this, he's sitting there. Yeah, they did this. They did that. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, man, look at this. Shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Out of all of Oh, but then the color of your skin, like you the one who's supposed to be straight with a nigga, but you don't want to hear, you know what I'm saying? Fing with my girl, bad as a bitch. I said, I don't know why you with him anyway. He's a sex offender. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, you bitch. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a sex offender, bitch. Let me offend you sexually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I was going on. Yeah, but I didn't say his hat. Yeah. <laughs> but you see how the table's turned? Yeah, you straight up. Saying? Straight so up. I didn't take that lightly, dog. Like, when I'm bitches, I, I told one of these dudes, dude named LG, side of nigga. OG nigga. I told him, I said, LG, man, look, man. Man, LV. I said, man. They have on the news, man, like that the motherfucker who was talking about this shit, that's that's one of the bitches that arrested me, like his name on my paperwork. Like he one of the officers. That nigga looked at me, he said, Boy, you finna go home. I said, man, you think so? He looked at me, he said, Come on now, Pete, you know better than that. You been doing this. I say, man, I see this shit and I've been thinking about this shit for two days, man. Like before I even let that shit sink in, I cling on to that f that's a hope. And show the f up, man. My lawyer came up there and said, First of all, you can go ahead and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you finna be out of here, man. You get your shit straight with your parole officer and shit, you, you good to go. You know what I'm saying? I was on parole, but I had been doing everything I was supposed to be doing as far as my parole uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So by that shit getting thrown out, even the arrest, the charge, the, the arrest had to come like it's like never, never happened. So by me being straight on my parole, the time I was in custody went past the time I would have been off of parole if I would have been on the street. You see what I'm saying? If I would have never got arrested, I'd have still, I'd have been off of my You'd have been on parole, yeah. So, right, so since the charge never happened, it's like I never got into the shit. So when I came home, fresh off of that shit, like just out, like wait a minute, like I have life? Like I'm not gonna be gone for 35 years or plus, like the judge told me, like you're starting off for 30 years, Mr. Stewart, because you're a career criminal, you was arrested with this, your points is this here, just, yeah. <laughs> to what all person Stewart packed, I'm like, where I'm going, man? <laughs> going on? I went to throwing up. Huh? Man, I went to throwing up. Yeah, yeah, not in the jail. Not, you know, I packed my shit and got the f*** on the line. <laughs> <laughs> you I got the fuck out of there, She answered the phone. She said, hello. I'm knowing she ain't knowing what the number was. I'm calling from Central Brooklyn. And she said, I'm like, man, come get me. She like, what? I'm like, man, come get me. She like, where you at? What's, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing what she thinking. Thinking, I just, I she said you escaped, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, so it happened before. 
they're in, like the people was behind me. Yeah. And I'm they behind me, behind me. Not like riding about to turn their lights on. Like no, I'm doing like 95 <laughs> to 200 Pacific on Airline Highway. <laughs> and she didn't call me. So I'm like to say, yeah, I done answered the phone. I'm like, man, I'm in a high speed chase, man. What you want, man? She are you sound said, man, I'm I put the phone on speaker phone, put that bitch right there. Like, and I'm telling her, like, yeah, man, them bitches right to right something out. I'm gonna go dip this way, head that way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So when she got that phone call, she thought it was like that. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. no, man, them bitches let me out this bitch. So she was just in shock. She knew what was going on, but mm -hmm. that shit was kinda hard to believe. Like being under the gun like that and then being released like that, that's some miracle type shit. I right, man, that's a miracle. That's not no shit that happened every day. Real you know talk. What I mean? Real so I, I looked at this shit like this this not no this happened for a reason. Yeah. I don't know about the other sixteen hundred people, the other fifteen hundred and ninety nine people. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know. You see what I'm saying? But for yeah. me, that shit means something totally different. You probably had somebody with a possession of weed charge got caught with a ground and was and they shit had to get thrown out. My shit was something different. Straight you up. You see what I'm saying? Like, Straight up. So I feel like my I, I I got a purpose. Like it ain't meant for me to be locked in a box for for forever. Fact. See what I'm saying? Yeah, real talk. Real right, talk. So being in that position like that, like being under a rock, like just being thrown away, it make me not care about what people perceive when they see me. I don't care. Yeah. What people see when they see me, I do not give them that one. Straight up. You feel what I'm saying? Because I done been somewhere where, where I was basically dead to the world. Yeah. I was dead before. Like I didn't. I didn't I'm, I'm here, but I done been mourned by everybody who come across my path. That means everyone who I come across, you've been okay. You done accepted me dead and gone and counted out. So you don't matter to me. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. What you have, your opinions is not gonna affect nothing that I got going on. And I, I didn't I didn't embrace that that emotion, that realization. Yeah. And I done really spent time into it and meditated on it and thought about it. Yeah. To where I'm like, man, it don't make sense for me to it don't even make sense for me to go get no hair cut. Yeah. yeah. I got clippers under my sink. The only time I'm gonna see my Kid is in pictures and in the mirror. Straight other up. people got to look at. I'm not going to be paying no fifty dollars every week for other people's eyes. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That's a waste of time, a waste of money for me. Yeah, I look good like this in here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how I feel about it. So I save time and money. You feel what I'm at? Yeah, that's the only too. thing stopping me from from. Only thing making me want to go get a haircut and look fresh so I can look a certain way for other people. You see what I'm saying? That particular haircut, that hairline, that hoping that bitch don't recede and all that shit, that's because of what other people would think. No, as long as I don't look like no wild man, I look presentable, I'm good to go. I don't need no hairline for that. Yeah, yeah. You see Real what I'm talk. saying? Real talk. But that's my, I'm not encouraging people to just shave their head to save time and money. I'm not encouraging that. That's just something that I do. You see what I'm saying? To yeah. enhance my perspective on life, to keep me in check, to remind me. Other people think when they see your face. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You doing yeah. what you're supposed to do. You're on the right kick. You know this. It's not up for debate. Yeah. You see what I mean? I'm not looking for approval. For I'm not looking for none of this shit. I'm already approved and certified by hey, myself and I. You feel what I'm saying? Straight <laughs> up. Real. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> on the real. <laughs> so, so how did that last, the last jokes that you did? How would you say that kicked in of what you got going on right now? I mean, with in multiple ways. Like it, it, every time I did time dog, I, I, I exercised relentlessly. You know what I'm saying? That 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 time of that, I didn't do none of that shit. I just laid down, and just like just sat down, just sat down. Gained like sixty pounds of fat. That when I did get out, then my girl got a room, <clears throat> and I was looking in the mirror, in the hotel mirror. With my shirt off, and that was my first time seeing myself like that after them 11 months I was in custody. And I seen how out of shape I was, and that shit fucked me up. I was trying to get back in the shape, but I was having like bad acid reflux, and I associated that shit with stress, like being like, you know, for the situation that I was in. But I was free. And the anxiety and the pressure of having to get back on my feet to survive, because I have kids, I have six of them. I got an old lady. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the head of the household. Yeah. People look up for me. Like when people need, they look toward me. You see what I mean? And I had to perform immediately when I came home. There was a lot of pressure. So that there was more stress. It's a different kind. You know what I'm saying? And that shit just f***ed my stomach. And that shit caused me to be hospitalized. When I got out of that bitch dog, my throat was so f***ed up from 
diamond in a way I couldn't beat nothing serious. I couldn't even meet a now. Like a mm -hmm. now was too acidic for my throat. So I had to eat bland mashed potatoes and grits. <clears throat> but by doing this shit, all that unnecessary ass weight was shitting off of me, man. After a week of not being able to eat, like talking about it, even though my throat was fucked up, I went to feeling like a hundred times better. And like I was exercising before I, I was hospitalized, but it was real hard to do so. Like within 10 minutes of like starting, I get nauseated and, have to, and like I have to throw up. Like that became normal, like vomiting. Damn. Like, I, 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 like the nausea come, it'll be situations like this. Like I just be chilling and just get nauseated. And mm. I have to throw up and then I'll be straight for like four, five hours. You see what I'm saying? Until it uh, hit again. Man, uh, after that week of being out there, this dog eating healthy by default, I started exercising. I was able to like go through the whole motions. Like I couldn't exercise how I normally would because I hadn't, you know, been training. But I went through the whole session. I didn't feel no nausea. I just felt fatigue as I should. And I stuck with it. And I said, you know what? I'm finna do shit that I never did when I thought the whole time I've ever been exercising, which was at the time like 18, 17 years of, of being into this shit. Yeah. My body started responding. Like it, it, with the diet, and the, and, and the consistent training, mm -hmm. even with me not really like being honed in on what I really wanted to do with myself, I just wanted to make sure I trained my body correctly, like every muscle group and cardio. When I lost like 35 pounds in like three weeks and I had picked up a lot of muscle mass, my body fat percentage went from whatever it was to like 5.9. Oh, right, but I, I dropped down to 199 pounds and I was Ooh. like, you know what? By that time, I had got more information on, on nutrition because I started doing the research. I started yeah. taking classes with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And I studied like three hours a day. And I applied the information to my body. And within like four months of that shit, people in the gym started asking me, am I getting ready for a show? I didn't know what they was talking about. So I had to ask questions and it, that shit kept occurring. Like people kept asking and assuming. Like they started asking what I'm taking, like what steroid I'm on. I'm like, <laughs> but I started asking, like, you know, like, is there is there money involved in this? Like, is there a bag behind these questions you asking me if I do personally train or if I do compete? I Googled this shit, and what I seen piqued my interest. And I'm like, you know what? This shit here is very lucrative if done right. If I'm good at it, I, I'd be compensated handsomely. So that's the kick that I'm on now, man. Like, trying to perfect what I got going on. Like, in a constant, like, seek of knowledge of the human body. Biomechanics, you know what I'm saying? Kinesiology, the way the body moves. But how can you construct the exercise to where it, it, it make your kinetic chain work to the favor of growing muscle? But healthily though, like not developing some type of muscle imbalance, bad posture, immobility from not stretching, you know, shit like actually looking good but also being healthy. Yeah. You feel what I mean? And also being able to do this shit in real life, like not as a professional bodybuilder for the average guy. The average nigga, the average everyone. You feel what I mean? If you breathe, you should be exercising to, to stretch your lifespan out. You, you feel what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I seen. Like, this shit you hear is very purposeful. You got a lot of people that's not okay with the way their body is. And I can help them. You feel what I'm saying? I can change their life. I can increase their they self confidence. I can, I can improve their sleep. I can help better their they, they libido. You see what I'm saying? With, with better blood flow. That means a strong erection for men. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I know how to train the body to increase the natural testosterone in a man after the age of 30. You see what I'm saying? I increase my knowledge on supplementation and nutrition. How to build better habits, set short-term goals. You see what I mean? Like, that's the shit that I'm learning. So when I see other people, regardless of who they is, getting into health and fitness, man, I applaud them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like now, okay, now we have something in common now. I, I, see, so I see signs of progress. I see signs of change. It don't take long for a person to start working on themselves, for other shit to start to, to, to they notice. Like, oh, you know what? I done bettered my body, but I got to leave the gym after hour of this shit. But it's addictive. It's like a video game. Like enhancing your player. Turning everything up to a hundred. The gym, your physical fitness is just one of those things. You got so much other shit in life, finances, relationships, your household, work. You're going to want to better that shit too like you did your mm, life. You yeah, see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so when I see yeah. people just getting into health and fitness, I know your lightning got turned on. If you stay consistent here, yeah, you're going to turn the f up. Straight up. 
Straight up. See where I'm at? Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. You might develop your little business or something, take your online course or some old shit, start spending real quality time with your loved ones because exercising is time-based. The moment you start your warm-up, everything is time-based. Your rest periods, your rep range, all that shit. You see what I'm saying? So you start seeing the value of time and how to organize that shit. You see what I'm at? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now let me ask you this. I did see something where you were saying... And I ain't you gonna charge you $10 for opening the water bottle, huh? Oh yeah, we gonna get him. We gonna get him, crowd. Nah, go ahead, my dog. That's all you over there. I'm charging you. Play it. Put a bag of peanuts on the counter and then see all you. You had concessions. You used the concessions at the moment. Fifteen dollars. I only ate three of them bitches. So I did see something where you was talking about health and fitness. You were saying to to the point where you don't have to work out for an hour a day. You got um, at least 30 minutes. Is yeah, that yeah. real? Yeah, real. So, can you give me a little, uh, me and the people around, a little advice on that? Five sets of body squats. However many you can do and struggle at. Be it 10, 15, or 20. If it's hard for you to get it, say you're going for 20 and you feel a struggle at 15, but you can complete that 20 five times in a row with about 30 seconds to, to a minute rest period, then you got a nice endurance. You can do 20 sets of body squats, take a minute break in between sets, five of them. That'll be 100 squats in a matter of minutes. You do the same thing with your push-ups. You get on the edge of a table or some old shit, you do you some back arms, you do you some stomach shit. You get you something where you can do you some curl, you get you a pull-up bar. Yeah, yeah, you can get your full body exercise in about 25, 30 minutes, man. You do that shit every day, your body will, you will see the effects of that shit. You're going to start performing them bitches better. You're going to start feeling like more stronger. If you diet properly, you'll start seeing results quickly. Quickly. Real. Okay, so now now that we're on the fitness topic, man, um, uh, the 30 minutes, we, we, we got that from you that we can do that. Um... I'm speaking for me in particular. I'm pretty sure they got people out there like me. Um, I was at the point where I was 260 pounds. Right now, I'm standing at, I'm, I'm going to say about 215. What would you recommend a male to go ahead on in endurance to, to start at least getting to the point where you at right now in life? As far as the health and fitness? Health and fitness for sure. Well, assuming a person already have the motivation and, and, and they, they set on, on starting, making that shit work is the key. Like, finding out how can you make it work consistently, the way it don't put a strain on your life, the way you have to take a choice. You know what I'm saying? The moment you sacrifice a part of your health and fitness after you done started, you're going to feel like you're slacking. Because you're going to have to bag up off of something because you done went so hard. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you hit rock bottom and you got intense. You feel what I'm saying? You did the most. You started dieting intensely, started working out, like just going to the gym twice a day, and then life started happening. Like the old lady asking him, what's up? Why you at the gym so much? Like people started saying, like, damn, you at the gym again? You feel what I'm saying? You can't keep that up. So you got to find a balance. That's the first thing. You see what I'm saying? But as far as on the physical part, like just assuming that you got the motivation, you know what gym you're going to, it's not going to eat too much into your time, or go out your way to get to and from the gym, or assuming that all that shit has been planned out and it's time for the nitty gritty, your diet and the way you train is key. You feel what I'm saying? And what your goal is. If you're trying to have some nice muscle tone and drop your body fat percentage, then you need to do some resistance training and cardio. The resistance training first, cardio after. If you have the time, do your cardio preferably six hours separate from your resistance training. You can do your cardio at home. The best form of cardio for stored fat loss is low intense steady state cardio, so that means walking at a brisk pace. Done consistently, like three to five times out the week, best at five for a long duration of time. Long duration of time means 45 minutes to an hour. That's down to like three miles if you're walking at the, at the, at the pace of like 3.5 on a treadmill. You see what I'm at? And in order for to get your nutrition diet, then you have to see what your, your BMR is. That's your basal metabolic rate. 
That's how many calories that your body would burn at rest. If you sit in the bed and just lay down all day and don't do nothing, your body will burn calories, a lot of them, like over a thousand, depending on your body type. Then you add in how active you are. Like your move, when you move, that's more calories that you burn. That consists of, with your BMR, your total daily energy expenditure. The calories you burn. Calories is energy. You see what I mean? So once you figure out how many calories that your body needs for to go through the whole day, now you know how many calories you need to give it in order for to see weight loss. You have to give your body less calories than it requires so you can tap into your stored energy source, which is stored fat. You see what I mean? Yeah. Fat is stored energy. Energy is calories. You oversome calories, you oversome, you overconsume energy. Your body not gonna disperse of, of, of extra energy. It's not gonna cap off and tell you that your tank full. It's gonna develop a, a extra reserve tank and put that extra energy right there for later usage. And it's gonna that, that stored fat. If you don't tap into that, that that reserve energy source, it's gonna sit there. And that's if you stay at a maintenance rate. You can it, it'll keep growing and you'll become obese. So you have to tap into the energy source. Don't give your body all the energy that it needs. Make it feed off the energy that it already have. Consistent until you get down to where you need to be. You're going to have to keep checking your, your numbers. Getting your cal That's called a calorie deficit. You have a calorie deficit. You have maintenance calories. And you have a calorie surplus. So when you go over your, your needed daily calorie intake. For those that's needing to, to build some mass. To gain some weight. So, so, calorie, so is calories really important? Like, like if just say you want to lose weight. Calories is the end all be all to weight loss and weight gain and to waste to, to sustain your weight. You feel what I mean? Food is your energy source, regardless of what it is. You have shit that's inside of calories. You have different forms of calories. You have nutrients like protein consists of calories. Carbohydrates they consist of calories. Fats they consist of calories all on their own. Carbohydrates, one gram of carbohydrates, that's four calories. Protein, four calories. Fats, seven. You see what I'm saying? Or maybe nine, one of the two. But I know fiber and alcohol are macronutrients as well, but not your main three. And them motherfuckers high in calories as well. So when you're reading your food labels and you see 40 or 50 grams of protein, mm -hmm. just know each, every one of them, 50, like 50 grams of protein, multiply that shit times four. That's how many calories that's that's good though. Protein is good. Protein, yeah. Right. Okay. So if you see a food product that consists of like 230 calories, but this bitch got like 40 grams of protein in it, all them calories is pretty much coming from protein. That's a good source of calories. You see what I mean? Especially if, if, if the remainder of the calories is not no bullshit. That's how you make better food choices. I got you. You want your you. shit to be nutrient rich. That's Man. why sodas are no good for you. Like liquid calories. That's you all say you sodas? Any type of uh, any type of food product, especially sodas, because they ain't gonna serve no nutritional benefit. It's just gonna be just for the self to satisfy your taste buds. It's not gonna have you no good carbs, no healthy fats, and no protein at all. Period. It's just consistent to the body if you keep consuming it, and that's what people do. People drink like liquid calories for they they water source. You see what I'm saying? I got you. <laughs> I got you. Now let me yeah. ask you this right here, do I ain't gonna say do. I'm gonna say, and I don't know if you got five in your head, but top five diets to help people lose weight. Uh, me personally, like since January the first, I started off. Uh, January the first, I was two hundred and sixty-five, two hundred and sixty-five pounds. I was having a lot of issues, a lot, and I started doing the keto diet. So I I was 265 and I got all the way down to 193 pounds and you know keep it real which I've messed up a little bit so I picked up another 15 pounds. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But during can you keto, give the people huh? yeah, during the keto diet when you was in the process of losing this weight, there's a high probability that you felt fatigue a lot of times. I you did feel bad, you feel like you just depleted, dry because the keto diet it requires you to deplete yourself of, of a lot carbohydrates, protein, your body has to go into ketosis. Yes. It's going to have to need all And once your body don't have it, your body will produce it that's already in you. So you'll start to have a catabolic effect. Your body will start feeding off of itself. That shit don't sound like it feed good. If your body is eating itself, that's what that's what I mean? exactly what it's doing. So let me ask you this. What you saying that? Because <laughs> you just hit me across my head. So 
for some stuff I ain't never even thought about. Oh, uh, and yes, your body is eating on itself. It's eating the fat off your body. Yeah, keto diet for lazy people, in my opinion. That's for people who can't all uh, stop from over consuming foods that's, that's, that's very dense in calories, so they have to eat foods that's not going to like spike the and just eat what they want, meaning they have no self-control, no self-discipline. Also, it's not for people who uh, exercise, because you need protein, you need carbohydrates for intense training and for, for muscle or uh, regeneration and, and, and growth and, and to sustain muscle. You see what I mean? Yeah. So if you're not giving your body this shit, you are no condition. You feel like you're just living because you're on a strict ass diet. Implement exercise. Put more stress on your body while you're on a keto diet. You see what I'm saying? You, you're on a road to destruction and it's not sustainable. How long can you go to the grocery store and shop in the keto aisle? How long before you end up <laughs> all the out around a kitchen to cook this shit off microwave and a Chick fil A right there, McDonald's right there, churches right there? And lo and behold, Popeye's got a <laughs> That nigga called my weakness. He called my weakness. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's really about your calorie intake, dog. That's your end all be all. You're not going to be able to consume your protein through through your actual food. You can, but it's it's you have to eat mostly like chicken, turkey. It's, it's, it's not sustainable for the average life. A bodybuilder, yeah, that's, that's, that's the They do that shit for kicks. You see what I'm saying? They're going to do it. You got people that climb mountains for fun. Everybody not going to do that. You see what I mean? I so you. you have to find a way for to not exceed over your daily calorie intake. So you need to know how many calories you need in order to, to get a hold of it. To it get the what you need to be. calories and maybe 2,000 calories depending on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's some variables that, that, that come into play to determine that. Your age, height, weight, how active you are, your gender. You see what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. determines what your, your total calorie intake should be. You want to go slightly below that. That's the key. Every day you want to go below that. The key is how do you do this without your hunger taking control of you to where you just go over that. You see what I mean? So you need to know how many calories is in your food. It's not going to take long. If you know how to play dominoes, you know how to remember the numbers and attach the numbers that you see. Who the f*** the, the dots on the dominoes after playing dominoes consistently? You play that shit for two weeks, you know how to stop and you be saying 15 with that one. That's how it plays when you're Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'll know, okay, that meal right there gonna consist of 600 calories, gonna have about 50 grams of protein. I need the carbs because I'm exercising. The carbohydrates is what fuel large bursts of intense movement. You see what I mean? If you go to moving fast and carbohydrates is what's, what's contributing to that energy. You know what I'm saying? That's what you burn in your carbs. If you ain't got no carbs in your body, then your body gonna feed off some other shit to create this answer. And that's how you start depleting your shit, which is good. You would like for the energy source to be stored fat. But depending on the intensity that you're going to, you might not tap into that and store fat. High intense training, you burn a strictly carbohydrates. You see what I mean? So you wanna fuel that, that, that session with carbs, like a Gatorade or a Powerade, not the zero, the kind with a large amount of carbs in it before, during, and after your training session to, to replenish your, your glycogen stores. Damn, it, man. It, 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 <laughs> hey, that's real. I ain't gonna lie. I, I ain't never even looked at it like that, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. When you said that's a lazy man diet, yeah. I got to say that I lost all that weight without going to the gym at all. Right. So, what you saying, man, that, that speak volumes. Right. So, yeah. let me ask you this here. What would you say, I, I'm going to need to say a top five or a top three diets that you would give out to the people that they can, um, you know, that they can go out there and, and, and try? Or what do you recommend? I recommend people seek the knowledge of knowing what, what a healthy food choice is. I recommend people, like, figuring out what a calorie deficit is. Once they figure that out, nature will take its course. You know you, you the, the problem with sticking to a diet is the appetite. It's the appetite. You tell a person, all to lose weight, stop eating so much. It's guaranteed you're going to lose weight. The way you want to see yourself, it can be achieved if you just stop eating so much. Plain and simple. Do it and get what you want. That person is not going to be able to do it. The hunger going to set in. They're going to cave. They're going to end up late at night stuffing themselves with something and just feeling like shit. They're going to say, I'm this deep in. Facts. Then the next night they're going to be sitting there watching some on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, seeing somebody exercise, and they're going to be like, damn, I need to, I need to shake back. And they're going to try again. Then they're going to fail. 
they're gonna try again and they're gonna say it. you see what i'm saying yeah man, that ain't the route to go man the best way for a person to do is figure this shit and figure out a way to combat that hunger you might have to break okay you know you need 2,000 calories for example you need 2,000 calories a day in order for to be successful with your weight loss goals you need to figure out how can you get these two calories, two thousand calories in in a day without having to deal with no hunger pains and no appetite. So you need to figure out what foods are is big on the plate, meaning that it'll be big in your stomach, meaning that it'll tell your brain that it's full but not high in calories, meaning that you can eat more, get hungry again, and don't be spiking up your calorie intake. Then you can find healthy snacks that don't consist of high calories. Cut out the sodas, those liquid calories. Those count towards your calorie intake. You drink a, two cold drinks, that's like 300 calories. That means if you drink four, that's 600. That means if you're eating 2,000 calories as you should, but you didn't have a soda at each one of these meals, you 600 calories over your goddamn calorie intake. Damn, you right. do that shit over time, you're going to start gaining weight and not knowing where it comes from. I'm eating all these healthy foods, I don't know where it comes from. You replace the sodas with a juice, lemonade or something. Lo and behold, it's high calories as well. So Which you, is fine if you're trying to gain weight or if you factoring in these liquid calories and you're using them as far as your math as well. It's a number game. If you know how to do simple addition and subtraction, you can get your diet in a whole. Now, I do grant that it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. So you do recommend. So what you're saying is what you recommend for a person if they decide to lose weight Go ahead on and count calories. You're going to have to count calories. You're going to have to. You see what I'm saying? Only for a short period of time. Because people don't eat a different meal every meal every day. If you eat three times a day, seven days out of the week, that's, that's, that's what, 21 meals? If mm -hmm. you eat three times a day, yeah. you're not going to eat 21 different meals. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to eat the same when that week come around. You're going to end up eating the same Meaning if you count these calories, you're not going to keep counting the same shit over and over. Eventually, you're going to know how many calories these meals is on site. You see what I mean? Yeah. So once you get the right meals down for the add up to your right calorie intake, then you'll go. There's different methods of fighting it to getting the calorie intake. Some people say, you know what? I'm not going to eat nothing past seven. You see what I mean? It ain't that eating past, like eating past seven contributes to the weight gain. No, that's just a person just, that's just a rule this person to set for themselves to help them with their form of losing weight. A mental strategy to keep them from overeating. That's all that is. Some people do intermittent fasting. They'll wake up, don't eat until around about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? Then they'll eat two more times. There's three meals that might be the right amount of calories. That's their form. That's their method. So what what you think about that? As far as intermittent fasting? If it works good. You know what I'm saying? Like if it works for you and they help you get your, your calorie intake in proper, good. If you're eating the proper amount of meals a day, like three, your metabolism is working to break this food down. Eventually, it's going to get used to being in work that much. It's going to get used to performing so much. Therefore, increasing your metabolism. People say, I got a, I got a slow metabolism. I guess so. You're only eating one time a day. Your metabolism is going to have to break shit down number one time a day. Your metabolism ain't slow. Your off slow. You're not eating enough. That's real. Right. That's real. I ain't gonna lie. Man, Damn, you want to eat real. one time a day and at night like most people do or in the beginning of the morning or your body gonna get used to knowing that we only getting energy one time a day. So we're not gonna break it down and use it for energy. We're gonna store some of this because we don't know when we're gonna get this again. Your body goes into survival mode. So a lot of people say, I don't know how I'm gaining weight. I only eat one time a day. It's, that's why. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's real. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Cause that's that's what I do. I do keto and intermittent fasting, and even sometimes prolonged intermittent fasting. Sometimes I go 48 hours without eating. Yeah, that ain't good. So when you do eat, your body gonna, you know what I'm saying? Then you not exercise at at all. So it's a high probability that when you do eat, you over consuming the calories. You might be staying at maintenance. You might, cause the body is like. Sometimes you might not feel the effect of something that you're doing till two or three days down the line. And then your, your appetite might change. You might not be as hungry as you was. That's because you're, you've been overfeeding your body to where it had enough of this week. So where now it's trying to balance itself out. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that's where you have an a, a, a energy imbalance. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you, you, your body trying to correct itself. The body is due, due to homeostasis. Your body is always going to be in a battle to find balance and to correct itself. 
You feel what I mean? Yeah. So when you, yeah. you're doing inconsistent shit, you're throwing your body out of whack. Yeah. You're going to feel inconsistent. You're going to think that it's you, it's your mood, it's just it's a person that's aggravating you. Or no, your body is up. Yeah. And that's the result of that. You, hey. got, you, you got jumbled up congestion. Your, your body, your digestive system jumbled up. So hey, now bro. your thought process jumbled you up. Saying, you saying the mouthful, because I'm going to tell you something you said. Because since I've been doing this keto diet, I, I started keto January the 1st this year. And when you said that fatigue, that's my biggest issue. All right, now, now think about it, dog. What kind of decisions you make when you when you tired as a bitch? Like you make tired decisions. Like you plan your 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 action part of your plan at a tired time frame. Because you know you can't perform at this time frame because you tired. Like you know I'm, I'm gonna do probably Friday when you can really do this shit right now. It's just you tired and you know you need to lay it down. You know you ain't gonna be able to do it properly. Was you right for prolonging it? Like because you know you can't do it. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. Right. Hey, I, I, right. Hey. When you got to take bad as a bitch. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna be able to put no hell of fire plan together and come up with some mastermind type shit. You're trying to get to a toilet. You and and, and with that, that, you can't even go to the toilet because you right. up because you eating all these fats. All right. So and you're your body not, you're going to think that it's you fine. Like you straight. Like you don't know that it's a better feeling for you if you eat better. This is all you know. You've been eating like shit your whole life. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you performing based off of that. Like your performance is because you feeling But for you, this is the norm. You see what I'm saying? Like this yeah. is okay. You feel fine. You feel okay. Of course you do. You don't know the alternative. You don't. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You get yeah. your body straight. You give it what it needs to be proper. You'll feel proper. You'll think proper. You'll perform proper. You'll be a proper you. On the real. Man, I ain't gonna lie. That's knowledge. Yeah, I can talk all day about that's this knowledge. Shit. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You, <laughs> hey, you just school me. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into what you saying about the calorie counts. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing keto for eleven months strong, man. Like I say, I didn't lost plenty of weight. I started off at two hundred and sixty-five pounds. I got down to one ninety-three. I had some hiccups to well, you know. I start eating. Really, I, I, I start really eating having, carbs. Yeah, we really having a consultation right now. That's you a consultation. Yeah, everything you saying, like yeah, what's what being talked about during a consultation with a potential client that I may have. Like, yeah, to figure out what they've been doing. Yeah, to see where they problem lies at. That they might be eating kind of straight already. But yeah, it might be just some misinformation that they have. They got their shit kind of. You see what I'm saying? I got you. Like, I got a lot you. Of people don't understand cardio. They don't even know that it's short for cardiovascular. You see what I mean? Yeah, so they yeah. when they go down to perform that shit, they don't know. They don't know what intensity to go in, or how long to go in, how many you. days to go in. You see what I'm saying? They don't know how many calories to burn. They just know that they burn the calories. And you probably yeah. up. I burn 700 calories on the treadmill. You, know, <laughs> you, got, you got a 2,200 calorie deficit, but you're going you to eat 3,500 calories. Yeah. But you yeah. don't know yeah. that that's too much. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't even much notice how many calories you eat. All you know is you done burn 700 calories yeah. and you expecting to lose weight. And when you don't, you're going to be like, man, that shit don't work for me. And it works for everybody. Damn, okay. This is, this is the human body. Like, this is this is basic science. This is not no, this person just can't lose weight. No. That shit don't work like that. That person can't stop overeating. That I person gotcha. can't seek the proper knowledge. This person can't actually sit down and do the logical math on, okay, it got to be a way to do it. You know what I'm saying? This can't be no magic. You know what I'm saying? It got to be a way. Gotcha. Flip side of this shit, though, was that information is valuable and it's expensive. Having a personal trainer is is, is not a, a, a common commodity or some shit that just comes with life. Mm -hmm. It's a luxury. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that yeah. means if you, don't, if you can't afford it, you have to be able to seek this knowledge of damn self. Yeah. And yeah. the average person, especially in, in, in certain communities, they don't even much know about physical training, don't know the value of a personal trainer, and for damn sure it's not from a pay for Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It takes somebody who can actually afford this shit or someone who knows the value of it to use it. Yeah. You know? And that, the way I feel about this, bro, like, that's, that's a, 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 one of the ways I make money. Yeah. So, it's about helping people. So that means I need to be helping people regardless of they using me as a trainer or not. You see what I mean? Like it's it's one of those type things that would by default you have to be a positive person. Yeah. In order to do this. Like you have to want better for other people. 
You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. So giving the information to people is not like I'm giving away something for free. I'm giving the shit to people who need it. This is this is this is an essence of life. Yeah. You feel what I mean? A, a calorie deficit and, and some exercise. So would you recommend when the person going to the gym, do you recommend them just doing more cardio? We just gonna say a person that's trying to get to where you at. Do you recommend them starting off with more cardio or do you uh, think that they should be hitting that iron and, you know, doing high endurance workouts? It, it all depends on a person. It, it varies from individual to individual. You see what I'm saying? Uh, as a whole, I can say what I can recommend is resistance training and cardio. Cardio in your calorie deficit is going to get you to lose body fat, lose weight overall, muscle tissue included. If you're not consuming protein and your, your water intake not proper and you're not training those muscles, then you're going to end up being a smaller version of what you is, the, 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 the definition of skinny fat. So to avoid that, you need to do some resistance training so you can have the right body composition. You can have a proper amount of muscle mass. You look good and feel better. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. While you're doing cardio and dieting as well, it's to drop down your body fat percentage. And as far as with all form of cardio with intensity level, it all depends on what your body type is currently in and the way you're eating. If you're going to be consuming a large amount of carbohydrates, you need to be doing some form of exercise the way you're burning a large amount of carbohydrates. If you're not going to be training like that, you don't need to be eating like that. All this shit got to come together, like butt cheeks. You see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 <laughs> thanks. So it thanks. depends. Like for you, for example, I would recommend you prioritize resistance training and do some cardio. You feel what I'm at? Yeah. If you're going to be dieting properly, low intense state of state cardio. If you're going to be eating kind of loosely, yeah. high intensity cardio in intervals, like running like at a high rate for as long as you can, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be able to do that shit for like 25 seconds, 30 seconds that, before you yeah. have to break yeah. the, the, the yeah. treadmill down to a walking pace for like a minute and a half. Yeah. You crank that bitch back up and give it what you got. You get to do that five times. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you. You're going to be burning you. half carbohydrates, half stored fat with this in, with this high intensity shit on this treadmill. Yeah. Probably all cost, but that's fine because you're eating like that. You're in a calorie deficit, so you're going to lose weight anyway. Yeah. You, you're doing some resistance training to where your muscles have been, have been damaged properly to where now they need to heal and recuperate, which requires your body to burn more calories. So now you're going to increase your... your uh, your, your, your BMR, the rate that your body burns calories, your metabolism then increase, everything is working in a flux. You see what I'm saying? But uh, like I said, it all depends on, on the individual. I got you. I got you. So, keto diet, would you say that's an in or that's an out? Just your spoken opinion. I say it, it, it depends. Like, the keto diet is perfect for people who not doing no extreme act Lazy activity. people. Not, I wouldn't say lazy like in that aspect. Yeah. For the people who can diet properly, mm -hmm. that need to be able to move and shit. Yeah. They don't need to be doing the keto diet. That's not healthy for you. I like got you. You need to, you need more sustenance. You need something more than, than keto products. You see what I'm saying? You're yeah. an active individual, so your body need to be fueled that way. When you buy a high priced foreign car, a big big truck that requires diesel fuel, you're not gonna pull up and get regular and lit. You're gonna f it up. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Keto might not be a might, might might not be your premium source of fuel. I got you. you see what I got you. Yeah, yeah. The people who are infirm, who uh, can't physically exercise or have no desire to exercise, body type is okay. They just need to get rid of some fat. That's all. The muscle mass is, is fine. Keto diet is perfect for you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it all depends. Okay. Okay. Last question, man. And we're gonna get ready to get out of here. I need you to name your top five artists in the South, man. South period. That's it. Of all time? Of all time. Uh, that's easy. Uh, this with, with, with all uh, lyrical skill or uh, influence on... I'm going to just say that, 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 that motivated you. I'm going to just say like, 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 you know... All of them, JG. Okay. Master P. Lil Wayne, or uh, South, Mystical, so many man, 
Soldier Slim, Mac. These rapping their ass off and was like, like some dead niggas. C Murder. Shit, Juvenile, BG Turk, the high boy shit. Like, that shit. Yeah, that was just Okay, hey, I'm oh, with you. Hey, I'm with you on all that. Everybody you name, yeah, I'm with you. I can keep, man. I can keep going, bro. Like even on local level, C-Lo, Bolson. I I can keep going, man. Fox. A lot of people don't know what a dude named that handy. Man, it, I, I I can I can go on, bro. There's so many other people that I ain't naming, and that's just like going for like back to a certain age of time. Like you already see what the South doing, especially yeah. back Rouge. Like you got some real popping artists, man. You got NBA Young Boy or YBZ or Seven F Street Carlos, Fredo Bang, or you, you got so many, man. Like they active and they doing. It, yeah, you know what yeah, thanks. Real team. talk, real, real talk, man. Like this shit pressure. <laughs> real me. talk, real talk. Yeah. Well, um, uh, we gonna get ready to close this interview out, man. Is there anything going on in your life that you would like to shout out before we go ahead on to end this video, man? Yeah, man. I like to shout out, or uh, really not shout out, just just say this while I have somebody's attention. Or uh, the world is having on um, a lot of tension going on, a lot of racial tension, and. People's opinions are valid. Like they, like their emotions are valid. The people, the people are saying about or uh, the way the world is, they correct. And before shit hit the fan, and we get all our panties in a bunch, regardless of what information that that uh, get revealed about the history of black people, the history of white people, whatever the f this shit end up it, we all got to come together for this shit to work. Like we not gonna have a planet all of one race. Facts. Don't being in power and all that shit is irrelevant. It's about survival. You see what I'm saying? It's about a better place for the people that we gonna create, like our children. You see what I'm saying? And as far as like being oppressed, I wouldn't wanna be an oppressor. You see what I mean? And I, I feel like this shit is important, especially with this Kanye West situation and Kyrie Irving. Like these people are speaking on some certified a lot of people is not even much catching this shit. The people who need to be catching is not even much paying attention. And that's bad. Because eventually, somebody's going to come along and say the same things that Kanye is saying, that Kyrie is saying. But they're going to say it, and people are going to hear it. They're going to understand it. Their eyes are going to come open. It's going to be too much of a shock, and it may cause pandemonium. You see what I mean? So before they should even much take it that far, I would like to see it, and I hope other people do see it. Hold off before you react in emotion. Use your head and let's figure it out. Once the shit gets settled and it's time for the actually put an action in a place to correct all this shit, we need to be a sound mind and body. You know what I'm saying? That, that means it's time for the negotiating to do business. And business ain't the, feeling, ain't the place for, uh, for feelings. So anger, uh, happiness, uh, motivation, that this shit is about you. You have to put all that shit to a side and, and have, a, have a sound mind. And we need to be here for tomorrow. Don't nobody need to, to oppress nobody. Nobody need to, to be oppressed. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> for real. Like, I see the shit coming. Like, I see it. Mark my words. You're going to have conscious rappers that's going to come out. People are going to take them more serious than what they would now. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's going to go back to the not Fight the power. Leaders of the new school. Conscious music. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's gonna go down to, man. Some digital planet type shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Percy Keith, man, I appreciate you for coming to have this interview with me, man. We're gonna go ahead on the end that like that, man. Yeah. Shout out to you for coming to rock with us on the channel, man. We out of here.